super important to have a coach who wants you to progress as opposed to a coach who who wants to be the center of attention and, and this this is a, a big problem with a lot of uh potential coaches out there they want to be the center of attention um a lot of people have been asking me lately what i think about um oh, what's his name joshua fabian the uh the coach of um Oh, man, blank on his name. Recently retired UFC fighter, um, Diego Sanchez. And I don't know anything about this man personally, and I don't, I don't want to say anything negative about him. Diego Sanchez is a man I respect a lot. He's, you know, he's proved himself over and over again in, in the cage, in the UFC. He's done tremendous things. And recently on the internet, this... Uh, you know, these videos have surfaced of, uh, you know, Joshua Fabian and, and uh, Diego Sanchez doing some goofy things together, like hanging upside down and, and uh, Joshua is like punching him in the head and stuff. And like, OK, obviously, that's that's not a training method that people should use. And I don't know why they're doing that, but OK, that's probably not something we should publish because there are people out there who uh, who want to emulate Diego Sanchez and do what he does and train the way he trains and so on and get the results that he got. And they're not going to by hanging upside down, having somebody punch them in the head. Okay. But the, the thing that I would criticize uh, Joshua Fabian for is the public appearances that I've seen him, him uh, make where he made it about him instead of about his fighter. Mm. And I, I don't know if you've seen these videos, but, um, but instead of promoting his fighter, instead of saying, um, my guy is a good fighter, this, this is why he's gonna win, this is what he's gonna do, this, this is his moment, it's all about him. It's like, everybody look at me. Right? And that, that, that's problematic. That's, that's not the type of coach I would want in my corner. Um, and again, I'm feeling a little little or miss I don't want this to come across as a bagging on 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 Joshua Fabian uh episode here but um yeah if, if I were to offer some constructive criticism to him I would say you know just um make your focus lifting Diego up as opposed to putting yourself in the limelight like if, if you look at if you look at most fighters most people don't know who their coaches are I mean, once in a while, we'll have a celebrity coach like Faraz Zahabi. People know him because he trained George St. Pierre, and he's got a successful YouTube channel. Um, Greg Jackson, you know, people know him because, you know, they, they've talked about him enough in the UFC. He's made enough public appearances and so on that people know his name. But, I mean, name a UFC fighter. Just, just name one off the top of your head. Okay, um, <clears throat> Israel uh, Adesanya. Okay, who is this coach? Who is no, his I... main coach? No, I, I don't know either. Na <laughs> name another uh, UFC fighter, like uh, on the current uh, UFC roster. Which one? Okay, uh, no, I was going to say Yoel, but uh, then you said that's currently in the UFC. Um, okay, how about um, uh, Oliveira, Charles Oliveira? He just, he Charles just became... Charles Oliveira, all right, perfect. Who's, who's his head coach? No idea. <laughs> no idea. Okay. And that's, that's the way it, it should be, really. I mean, I, I say that as, as a coach who, you know, I, I depend on, on uh, athletes coming to me for essentially my, my, my paycheck, right? But even so, even though, even though pushing myself into the limelight is profitable for me that's that's not what i'm about right and what do those coaches do why why are um israel adesanya and uh, charles oliver why why are they successful because well how did their how did their coaches help them to become successful 
by giving them the best opportunities they could to to give them experiences that allowed them to win fights, basically. And that's it. By helping them along the way, not by exalting themselves and and putting themselves first. And this, this is a big problem with traditional martial arts versus combat sports. We, we do see it in combat sports, but not as much because the coaches have a vested interest in making sure their athletes win. They have a vested interest in making sure their athletes are better than they ever were, right? Whereas with traditional martial arts, it's, off, it's often about um, essentially worshipping the sensei, worshipping the sifu, worshipping the, the guru, if you will. And everybody defers to his judgment. Everybody defers to his power. Like nobody can show him up. Nobody can be better than the master. Nobody can be better than Bruce Lee in the Church of Jeet Kune Do, for example. Whereas I think, you know, going back to Bruce Lee again, he, I think he would hate that because he, I think he wanted, pe he wanted martial artists to be better than they were. That's what he was all about. He wanted martial arts in general to be better than it was. He, he wanted it to be something, um, something far beyond what people at his time could have imagined. I, I, and so a, a MMA coach needs to have the same vision for his fighters. He needs to do everything in his power to make sure they are better than he ever could have been. Um, as far as an entourage, man. First of all, don't go out of your way and, and uh, <laughs> to uh, blow money on, on a... Uh, on a fake entourage, man. I know some fighters have done this. They, they, they throw money at, at uh, people trying to, trying to look cool. Stop trying to look cool, and and just focus on, focus on results, man. Be a very results-driven person as far as fighting goes. Does it work? Great. Do more of it. Does it not work? Get rid of it. Um, having a conversation about entourage just the other day with with one of my students and he brought up i don't remember which fight no it wasn't a fighter it was a basketball a pro professional nba player i don't remember which one but um this man is fabulously wealthy and not just because of his success in the nba but because of all these investments and so on that he made but his entourage was basically he hired his trusted friends that he grew up with to work for him, not to be yes men, but to work for him, to, to join his team. And, uh, and as a result, he was tremendously successful. So essentially what he did was this formula I'm laying out for you here right now, surround yourself with people that you can trust, the people you can trust with your success. I, I, I have this experience quite a bit where a fighter will be disillusioned with his current coach or his current gym, and then they will come to me looking for something different. And then they will go away disgruntled because they're getting the same results, and I'll tell you why. Okay. So I had this experience fairly recently. A fighter came to my gym, and he's basically like, my other coaches suck, my other team sucks. Let's see what you can do for me. I'm like, all right, cool. Let's see, let's see how, how you are. And, um, you know, this guy, he's, uh, I can see right away he's, he's kind of a lazy guy who expects the work to be done for him as, a, as opposed to be putting in the work. And he's got a fight coming up in two weeks' time. And he is essentially asking me, Make me win with only two weeks of training with you. I'm like, dude, this is not how it works. It's not how it works. Like, we need a long period of consistent training to get different results. Okay. And he's like, well, I have a fight in two weeks. Do what you can. I'm like, all right, I'll do what I can. But, you know, the difference between now and two weeks from now is going to be fairly minimal. He didn't like that answer. He goes out. He loses this fight. He gets upset. He leaves, goes on to another gym, has the same exact results, goes on to another gym. And 
this is not an isolated incident. I see this a lot. So, so a fighter has to take personal ownership. They have to take they have to take responsibility for their own actions. They have to take responsibility for their own losses and for their own wins. Now, there are better coaches than others. Like if a coach is having you hang upside down while he punches you in the head, probably not the best coach. Okay? Probably not the best training methods. That's probably a big red flag. Okay. But um, yeah, there, there are athletes who will succeed regardless of who they train with. Like, you know, Ronda Rousey was competing, for example, a lot of people reamed her coach. And I think I think a lot of that was was unfair judgment because, you know, after Ronda lost a couple of fights, people were like, ha ha, her coach sucks. And, you know, there was that whole, you know, head movement, head movement meme. Um, but Ronda was one of those fighters who I think would have succeeded regardless of who was coaching her, regardless of who she had in her corner. She would have had a similar level of success and a similar level of failure, I believe, regardless of who was coaching her. And I think that's specifically because she was a self-motivated fighter. Um, whereas when you have a guy who feels like the coach needs to hold his hand and do everything for him, uh, that's a guy who needs to work on his own personal personal initiative. So this is this one thing I would I would uh, stress to fighters: make sure you cut the apron strings, become an independent, self motivated man. Okay, a coach is tremendously helpful. A good coach is tremendously helpful. And uh, you know when I was when I was fighting, I didn't. I went in there without a coach. I went in there without corner men. I showed up to fights without a corner man. I was that guy. And I experienced a proportionate level of success to the amount of effort I put into it, which was fairly mediocre. And if I could go back in time and tell myself something, I would say, get a coach. And I would probably say, well, which coach? And my response would be, go to the closest gym you could find, sign up, get that coach, right? And and just be committed to the process. And that probably sounds like terrible advice to a lot of people who have a lot of uh, uh, opportunities to pick and choose between gyms. Okay, if that's great, go try them out, see which one feels like the best fit for you, stick to that, right? But yeah, people are so obsessed with finding the best thing, the best gym, the best coach, the best team. Best is so relative. It's incredibly relative. For some people out there, I'm the best coach for them. And for other people, I might be the absolute worst coach for them. Right? For some people out there, you know, you are probably the best martial arts coach for a lot of fighters out there. You might not know it. They might not know it. But you probably have something that will resonate very deeply with a certain set of people that could push them to success in professional mixed martial arts if that's what you wanted to do. Okay? And maybe that's, maybe that's not something that interests you. And then for a lot of people, that would not be the case. And you could say the same thing with, uh, you know, Greg Jackson, Faraz Zahabi. You know, they're excellent coaches. I, I um, trained with one, one of Faraz's guys came to train. Uh, he came and trained at my gym for a while, for about three months. And the dude was awesome. And he was a, he was a great athlete and, you know, a phenomenal grappler. And we, you know, we had a lot of train. Uh, we had a lot of fun training with with the guy, and he was uh, just an absolute testament to the fact that Faraz is a good coach and a good trainer. But is he the best possible coach for everyone? I mean, I think it would be silly to 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 say that because everybody resonates on different wavelengths with different people, and it's entirely possible. Going back to Joshua uh, Fabia Fabian, I don't even remember the dude's name. Diego's coach, Diego Sanchez's coach. Maybe, just maybe, they are a good fit for each other. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there's some method behind the mad madness of hanging upside down. I don't know. Not something I would do or recommend anyone. 